To program any module on a GM vehicle, you're going to have to use the interface AC Delco TDS, which is Technical Delivery System. This interface is a web-based browser that launches the tool that will allow us to basically talk to Detroit, download the as-built data, and upload it to the module that we want. GM works off of a subscription-based um, setup where you buy a $45 subscription per VIN number. But with that subscription, you're able to flash an unlimited amount of modules an unlimited number of times, basically for two years. So it's $45 of in, you can do every module on one vehicle. It's not a terrible deal. After you purchase the subscription, you'll be showing the screen that you see here, where I have one available vehicle programming software subscription. So when I click on view, It'll show any previous VINs that I've programmed with this AC Delco TDS account. I'm going to click on Add VIN, and from there it will launch the application TechLine Connect. TechLine Connect is GM's software package for um, parts, for diagnostics. Uh, reprogramming, basically anything and everything, whether it's light duty, medium duty, uh, electric vehicles, everything is in the TechLine Connect. I've already got TechLine Connect loaded on this vehicle, so I'm just going to hit launch. And basically, once it launches, it always kind of checks the lease to make sure that you have a valid subscription, which we do because we paid the $45. And then it will also check to see if any of the different apps within TechLine Connect need to be updated. So um, that's pretty typical. At least once a week, something in the TechLine Connect package needs to be updated. Uh, right now, it looks like we don't need to update anything, so it'll be relatively quick. Um, as far as interface, I am using the interface MDI, which is uh, just the MDI-1 powered through the DLC on the vehicle and then wired to the computer with a USB cable. That way I have less connectivity issues or chances of it dropping out in the middle of the flash. I always like to hardwire it, I suggest you do the same. I rolled the key on as you can hear, I'm going to hit connect vehicle and it should be able to identify this vehicle. So it's identified it as a 2009 regular cab, and that's kind of as far as it can go since this is a 2009 C4500 Kodiak. Uh, medium duty kind of falls in a gray area. We're going to navigate to the left-hand side, SPS2, Service Programming System 2, because we want to reprogram the TCM on this truck since it was just sent out and a third party repaired a chip on the board for a loss of communication. On the right side here, I've got two options. I've got reprogram and I've got replace and reprogram. We're going to keep it on reprogram since it's an existing module. I'm going to hit next on the bottom right. And after that loads, it'll show you all the different controllers on this particular VIN that are eligible to be reprogrammed. So we're going to click on TCM. It only allows me to program. And for programming type, we're going to do normal with that MDI-1 interface. Click on next. From here, it's going to verify that you've got an eligible vehicle with that $45 sub subscription that we bought. And from here, 
it's asking us, hey, is this a Silverado or a Suburban two-wheel drive? Um, Silverado is kind of the closest thing. And then we have to select the correct hardware ID for the controller. This number uh, at the end, the 94668860, that is the number physically on the controller itself. Uh, if that label is somehow worn away or illegible, uh, you can use the Tech 2 and look that up, which I've already done. So we're going to hit Next. And basically here it's showing you, here's the calibration, it's for the TCM. Uh, this is the index or calibration number, and then the history of what's in there. So we're going to hit Next. Uh, right now it doesn't really recognize, that's nothing to really worry about. Uh, sometimes it tells you if a particular calibration fixes a certain DTC, or a certain symptom or feature uh, needs to be enabled for the customer. We're gonna hit start programming. Uh, we've got a battery charger hooked up to the vehicle. Again, the interface and laptop are hardwired to the vehicle and to each other. Right now it's downloading the calibration basically from Detroit. And once the calibration is on the laptop, then it pushes it to the interface and into the vehicle again trying to reduce the likelihood of the whole software reprogramming process dropping out and possibly bricking the controller so from here you know you see the estimated time remaining all kind of depends on how big the flash file is which controller we're reprogramming but it should be done relatively shortly by the looks of it Now it looks like it's complete. So gives us a warranty claim code. It always generates that uh, regardless of whether or not the vehicle you're reprogramming actually is under warranty. Uh, with this being a 2009, it's far outside of its warranty. Regardless, I still record um, this screen and I kind of print it out and just put it in the vehicle file for future reference. I know that the physical software took because previously I had no communication with the module and as a result the Prindle had no uh, display underneath the PRND321. There was no line under any of those letters and now I've got that as well as the gear and wrench symbol on the dash was previously, previously illuminated and now it's not. So I'm very hopeful that that flash is successful. Uh, this prompt is just telling you, hey, you are now recorded as starting the two-year clock on your ability to flash an infinite number of modules on this VIN. So I'm going to hit later, and then 
I would always recommend hit clear DTCs down here. The MDI is capable of reading and clearing, so take the time now, clear all the DTCs. A lot of them get generated um, during the flash process, and there's not necessarily a problem. So it's always good to just start fresh, clear everything. Uh, gives us an error, so we'll try one more time to clear those. Otherwise, we'll probably have to drag out the Tech 2. It's not unusual. And then from there, we can verify that vehicle works, PTO still functions, and then return this to service. So pretty straightforward for reprogramming uh, modules on a GM vehicle. If we needed to reprogram additional modules, we can proceed with the same VIN, or we can click New. And when we click New, um, now we've got to rehook up to a different vehicle, buy another $45 subscription. But I hope this was helpful. Take care.